I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the prophet of the restoration and founder of the LDS Church, the church I served as a bishop for five years. I knew the church was true. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. My life has been built on certain truths, but wishing doesn't change the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. When I finally learned the truth about the real history and doctrines of Mormonism, I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have come to learn that many others have made a similar journey out of the bondage of religion and into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about. Courageous people who want to share their story, hoping that you, the viewer, will discover the same new life in Jesus. So if you're a Latter-day Saint who is struggling with questions or seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we invite you to join us tonight. We have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, <coughs> excuse me, Bishop Earl, and I appreciate you spending some time with us. The last couple of weeks, we've met Michael Webb and Angie Webb, and today I'm really thrilled to introduce to you Eli Webb, a good-looking 19-year-old <laughs> who's uh, been willing to share his story and, and the perspective you probably have of your mm -hmm. parents and your own life. And Where were you born, actually, with all the traveling around? I was born in Salt Lake City okay. and raised in East Mills Creek. Okay. Um, and then we moved around a lot. So yeah. We moved when I was 11 to Heber City. Okay. Did you enjoy Washington. that up there? I loved it. That's pretty up there, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, you know, it's beautiful. A little cooler, but uh, mm -hmm. real pretty. And then up now up in Washington. Now up in Washington. Yep. Okay. And, uh, of course, you were born in the Covenant because your mom and dad were married in the mm -hmm. Salt Lake Temple. And uh, were you just normal, active Mormon and went yep. to church all the time? And mm -hmm. Yeah. Everyone I knew was Mormon. All the people I hung out with and spent my time with were Mormons. So we all had the same faith in common. Yeah. So it was that was my world. That's what I was used to and what I knew. Yeah. There's really nothing else. And, and I didn't understand that there could be anything else. Yeah. Baptized at eight, of Baptized course, at eight. You got the Aaronic priesthood, did you, mm -hmm. at age 12? And yep. Yeah. So uh, scouting it was important to you, I guess? Yep. And, yeah. And all the scouting was also very LDS because it was yeah, the LDS sponsored. by the church, LDS sponsored. So yeah. um, I grew up and I loved it. It was my favorite part. I loved all the camping trips and all the discussions we had on the camping trips um, about the gospel. And I was just a true believing Mormon, I guess, just yeah. growing up. Did you ever happen to read the Book of Mormon or did you get I into that I actually never finished it on my own. I read it through it in like seminary oh, in high school oh, and you stuff. Took seminary, okay. Yeah. So I read through it with other people, but never um, sat down and just like read all the way through on my own. Was that in Heber that you were in high school? That was in Heber. Was that it? was in high school. Yeah. Okay. So you got release time. I got release time. Heard your mom went to the five thirty in the morning. Mm -hmm. Would you have gone to seminary if it had been five thirty? I would have gone at five thirty if I had to. You're a dedicated. I was dedicated. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah, I've often wondered about that. It's separating the, the mm -hmm. sheep from the goats, as it were. <laughs> yeah. Five thirty in the morning. Mm hmm. And uh, in, in discussing things with you, you mentioned that you watch General Conference. Watch General Conference was, every six months. Uh, we all expected, I guess, as the family expected. sit around and listen. And, and you knew it was when that Sunday came or that Saturday came, if you had plans with friends, they were forfeit. And you just, really? You um, did. And our neighbors were watching it. Sometimes we would be invited to watch it with neighbors, but we usually stayed with our family. Yeah. Um, so the kids would go upstairs and listen to the radio and kind of lounge around and listen, and then mom and dad would stay downstairs and watch the TV or vice versa. It was neat. I, I was able to stay in my pajamas. And, yeah, uh, but that I'd was cool to not have to dress up really nice. That <laughs> <Yeah>. was nice. <laughs> Anything ever hit you? It's, of course, you, uh, now at 16 mm -hmm. is kind of when things happen for you, but yeah. uh, anything really strike you funny? So through growing up, kind of like my parents mentioned in their interviews, I always had a craving for Jesus too. So whenever Jesus was talked was about... Was this because of them, do you think? Or just I think, because of personal... I think it's a personal thing. Really? I think God gave me that. And I'm extremely grateful for that because I always had a thirst for him. And I never had like a thirst like I do now because I know the real Jesus at this point. But whenever Jesus was talked about, which was pretty rare, um, I 
sometimes I would be in tears, and I just loved it. It was amazing. And now, so... It, it, I guess I'm just curious because, I, I, I mean, I felt like I was such an active person, but I never had this thinking about Jesus. It, was mm. just, it wasn't even in my thought yeah. process. And you really did. I really did. And I would talk to my friends about it. Is that and unusual? Did your friends feel that way too? My friends would be like, yeah, Jesus is like our brother. He's amazing. But I always felt like Jesus was a little bit more than that. And so like my favorite thing was like when we watched um, the video of, I don't remember what it's called, but it's in, everyone watches it if they're in the Mormon church. It, when Jesus goes to the Americas to visit them and it's the whole sort of the atonement and all that. I loved mm -hmm. it whenever it was talked about, whenever it was the story of the New Testament. Yeah. It was my favorite part. And I, that was what I bore testimony about most. I didn't really have the carbon copy. I would know the church is true. Joseph Smith is a prophet. It was more about Jesus for me growing up, wow. which um, no one ever talked to me about, like, well, why is your testimony different? But I guess I noticed that after coming out that that's kind of how it was. Um, and then when I went into seminary, that's when you kind of start to have a personal growth in the Mormon church because it's like a class at school and you get to take what you want from it and kind of just be with a bunch of kids your age that you hang right. out with. Yeah. Um, and I agree with a lot of it, like most of it. And then one day we talked about heaven. And I already knew kind of how heaven worked, but when you were in seminary, it was way more detailed. And so the celestial... Went through the plan of salvation, did Plan of salvation, the celestial kingdom, terrestrial, telestial. Yeah. And the, the thing that got me most, that just made me kind of sick, is when they said... I mean, it was all exciting. I was like, we were going to have... Like, they talked about, like, you can create your own worlds, and, and if you want to, you know ride a dragon, you sure can. <laughs> like it was, and that was exciting to me. Um, you do what you want. Huh? The thing that got me most that was really weird was when they said, you will be like God. You will be on the same level. You will become a God. And so I was like... That's the whole reason for being here on yeah. the earth, yeah. And I was like, no. no what? That doesn't feel right. That doesn't yeah. feel right. That's the point. Like, God is God. We're human beings. Like, yeah, I have God's DNA, I'm his child, but I'm not going to be, like, he's too big for that. I'm not as important as him. He's perfect. I'm not perfect. How can I become like that? That's not fair. That doesn't make sense to me. I wanted to be less than God. I wanted to be his follower. I didn't want to be like him you because wanted, then what's the point? You wanted to be able to worship an almighty I wanted God. To be, I wanted did to be able to worship. Did you share this with anybody? Your mom or dad I or anybody? I don't think I did. I remember walking back from seminary and saying to my friend Carly, and I was like, that was kind of weird, right? When they said that we are going to be like, like, like God's, like we're going to be the same power as Jesus. And she said, well, it's in the Book of Mormon, so I, it's true. Oh. And that's what everyone would tell me about everything I ever doubted. And I was sick of hearing of that. Yeah, I don't think it's actually in the Book of Mormon, but that's... <laughs> the Doctrine and Covenants or whatever. Everybody, yeah, but that's what she said. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so... Now, it, were your parents... Where were your parents at this point when you're 16? Are they... So I know that my dad is gone. So around this time, I would like... I like... I remember sitting in my parking lot in my, in my driveway with my mom and saying after after church we went and my dad had not gone with us and I was like mom does dad believe in Joseph Smith anymore and she said you know buddy I don't think he does and that's okay like dad's on his own little thing right now and we just got to support him yeah and I was like oh what Joseph Smith um and, but that was before the whole we're going to become like God's thing so that was before I had doubts that was when I was trying to yeah. understand what my dad was doing yeah um and so we went a couple times to support my dad to, to, to the Christian yeah. church. What did and, you think of that? Oh, man. I was so uncomfortable. <laughs> like, I, I'm used to sitting like this and yeah. having everyone really comfortable. Um, but Singing everyone was standing song. up, doing this, and just praising Jesus. And, like, you could hear people going, Jesus, 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 and just doing that. And I was like, stop it. <laughs> it's so weird. Like, I just want to sit down and listen to whatever this guy has to say. We don't have to sing. And let's weird get songs. out of here. <laughs> yes, I wanted to go home, get my PJs, eat cereal, and watch cartoons, and just be myself. Yeah. But it was just really uncomfortable. And now I'm that guy. Now, now I you... now I I want to raise my hands and I want to say Jesus' name as many times as I can, and I want everyone else to feel like that. And I just Jesus is now everything instead of something that makes me uncomfortable. Well, you know, a lot's happened to you in three years, I can <laughs> tell that. Now, at 16, you do go talk to your bishop. What, I did what, go what talk that, to my bishop. Was that just a normal interview? That what? was me already deciding beforehand, I'm going to leave the church, and I need to go let him know really? what's happening. So, so how old were you when you heard this thing about becoming a god? Was that like at 15? That or was, was, a, that that was 16? 16. That okay. was when I, at the beginning of 16. So what did you talk about? I just went and said, 
Bishop, I'm like me and him were really good friends. Like he was a very involved in my life, and so I knew that he would he would understand. So you could I could tell he was like a confidant to, yeah. in a way. And so I went and told him about where I was at, and I thought it was gonna be like a thirty minute conversation, and it turned into three hours. And we just talked and talked about just like all the different doctrines, and I just told him Jesus is just not in here enough. He's just not here, and he's like. I totally get you. I totally understand. And I was like, no, you don't. Like, if you understand, then, you then understand. why are you not wanting to leave the church? <laughs> yeah. And um, he, he just kept going on. And the thing he said at the end is, we're just going to miss you. We're just going to miss having you around. But I understand I, and I support you. But I was a Mormon too. I'll and when someone doubted. some seeds, do you think? I hope so. Uh, I mean, he's going to. I mean, to have a 16-year-old be witnessing in that, in that way. And if he's paying attention to general conference and mm -hmm. to other things, he's going to see that Jesus something's isn't, missing. isn't very... Yeah, something's missing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I went from Jesus being, like I, like I said, I, already, I always had a thirst for him. Um, and that led up to the point where I really knew who Jesus was. And so I traded this religion for a really deep relationship that's just getting deeper and deeper. And that is life-changing and so to have Jesus be like this guy that's like my supporter and you know my friend that I can talk to about stuff go from that to like <laughs> to this huge powerful grace-giving amazing <laughs> everything every adjective that's positive person yeah. um, that's be amazing. my all like when people say oh, I love Jesus that are Mormons you know we're Christians too that is one of my least favorite things to hear <laughs> Oh, we're Christian we're too. We're Christians too, because yeah, that's you can their... be a you can't be a Christian because you believe in God. You, a Christian is someone who God, who Jesus is everything, who you realize surrenders that all. He's done everything. You and realize that, you, that you're nothing. That you're nothing. If you're if you call yourself a Christian and think that you need to do temple work and think that you need to um, do visiting teaching and all this other stuff, then you don't really know who Jesus is and who He can be for you. It, yeah. When you when you become a Christian. You surrender everything. Every, any addiction or struggle that you're having becomes less of this, oh, I, I can stop this. I'll just talk to people and I'll, I'll stop. I, um, I'll, I can even keep it to myself. It'll, it'll, be, it'll, be, it'll be okay. When Jesus becomes your Savior, you surrender to Him, and there comes about this openness to want to serve Him and to want to be a good person, not because you want to earn your way into heaven, because that's already paid for on the cross. Yeah. And that's such a beautiful we thing. We never understood that as Mormons. Did yeah, we, we never did. did. Well, just to put this in perspective, if you were still active LDS, you would mm -hmm. have been out on your mission for a whole I year. I would have been out on my mission for a whole year. Right how now. many people, how many missionaries do you think have this kind of zeal or witness of Jesus? How many Mormon missionaries have that? I don't uh, think very many. And I, I think I people either. are out there scared. Because they're preaching the church, right? Yeah, they're preaching I mean, Joseph Smith Joseph Smith's and the gospel. Plan of Salvation and the Book mm -hmm. of Mormon. And, and that's not really inspiring. What's inspiring is you go into someone's house and say, I have the message of Jesus. Like, you're struggling with a bunch of stuff, and that's okay because Jesus loves you, and you can get out of it. Like, you don't need to keep trying. Like, it's, put your trust in yeah, Christ. Don't yeah. put your trust in all these things like the Plan of Salvation and your family. Put your trust in Jesus. And if people can hear that, and that's that's the hard part, is that's up to God for people to hear that. Yeah. You know? And have them work in, mm -hmm. or have Him work in their heart. I so, have, go ahead. Oh, I've, I've just, I've had many discussions with, like when the missionary age changed, and I was already a Christian, all my friends that were seniors were ready to leave. And, the, and so they were in missionary mode before they graduated with me. Oh. And so, I remember sitting at lunch one time, and someone said, wait, Eli, I heard a rumor that you're, like, you're a Christian, like you left the church. And I was like, yeah. And then this other person said, what is wrong with you? <laughs> and What is wrong? That was my friend that said that, and she like got mad. And I was like, well, that's loving. I, I, don't, I thought the Mormon church was a loving place. I guess not. <laughs> and they said that, and then my friend who asked if I left the church said, come on, Eli, we're going to walk around. We're going to walk around and talk. And over and over again, he's like, Eli, I know you're having doubts, and I just, we've been praying for you, and I just challenge you to read the Book of Mormon. And I was just thinking, you know, how many other thousands of people have said that same phrase, and I've said that to somebody? Yeah. That doesn't do anything to my soul. What does something to my soul is, Jesus died for you. Like, and he never let me speak. He, he, he said, I know what you mean, I know what you mean. Read the Book of Mormon. And I could just say, I, I'll read the Book of Mormon, guess what? It's not going to do anything for me, because it didn't die on a cross for me. 
Jesus did. That's not the good news. That's not the good news yeah. at all. So Jesus died on the cross. So you left the bishop's office. Were you then kind of at that moment kind of committed? or I was committed. And to, to the thinking, okay, I've, I've got to move on. Mm -hmm. And just before that happened, the thing that really made me want to leave the church was when I gave my life to Jesus, the born-again experience that Christians talk about all the time. Yeah, talk about that. Um, my family and some friends went down to um, a college campus to hear Nick Vujicic speak. He does sermons all over the world. He has got no arms or legs. He's from Australia. And I had heard about him like our family had done, like, little discussions together and watched a video and, and you know, talked about God. And this I was in Orem, was, right? Or this was in Orem. Provo, Orem. And I thought he was the coolest person, so we had an opportunity to go see him, and I was excited. Um, though I had always just thought that he said some great words. And so when we went down as a family, the whole sermon, I was like, what? Like, he's telling stories about going into these camps where there's these prostitutes that have been selling their daughters and, like, these horrible, dark sins. And he just would pray over them, and they gave their life to Jesus, and I was like, that is beautiful. Like, I want that. That's amazing. Yeah. And in the ending of the whole sermon, that was such real talk. It was not a bunch of ordinances and just, it didn't feel like a business meeting for once. Yeah, yeah. And, um... Not a bunch of to-do list yes, things. Yes, it was amazing and beautiful, and I was just emotional and feeling God so much next to me and in me. And he ended and said, with an altar call prayer. He did this prayer, you know, Jesus changed my life, all that kind of thing. And I don't remember the exact words. It was three years ago. But at the end of the prayer, he said, if you feel called by Jesus, if you feel like Jesus is saying, you need to get up and go, you need to change your life, I want you to stand right now. And I just closed my eyes and stood up. And when I opened them, there was my brother standing next to me. And oh, then my goodness. A few other people in the crowd standing up. Yeah. And that moment, I couldn't go back. So if people were challenging me to read the Book of Mormon, no way. I already had the fullness of the gospel that Joseph Smith tried to bring. Yeah. You know, it, it was amazing, and I'll never forget it, and I'll never go back. Did you even think that you'd stand up? No. I didn't go to that thing that <laughs> night thinking I was going to feel emotions, <laughs> but I did. And that was a God thing. That was Jesus Christ in me. And then I went to my dad's church that he was really leading worship at every Sunday, High Point. Um, and I just loved, I loved hearing all these Christ-centered uh, sermons and all the songs, the, the contemporary worship songs that, that really spoke to me that I really loved. Um, and then I got baptized in a Holiday Inn swimming pool <laughs> with my brother. Praise and, God. Um, I remember right before I moved to Oak Harbor, my dad put a clip together of all of our bapt baptisms. Yeah. And we all get to bear our testimony to our little church. And it was amazing. Just, we were all crying and sad to move, but ready to move. And now we're in Oak Harbor, thriving at this at the First Reformed Church, Oak Harbor, as a family, leading worship together. I get to play the piano every Sunday, and it's just really? okay. a beautiful thing that God has done to our family. And I want him to do it to every other Mormon family, but I know he has his will and his timing, and all I can do is pray. Yeah. So. Well, that, that is something. We have to show patience and love. Mm -hmm. and that's just amazing. Uh, you've got such a, a interesting perspective of, perspective of things that I just... I just never had. I guess I was naive. <laughs> but again, God works in in time in our own time, and mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, hearing these words of praise to Jesus, um, it's just so different, isn't it? The, than again, like we said, to, to going to the Mormon church. Yeah, yeah. It's really amazing. And, and the to-do list and all that. You feel a f sense of freedom. Did you ever freedom. understand grace as a Mormon? It was always. You need to work hard, and like Temple Recommend was all about, are you worthy? If you have this sin in your life, then you can't yeah. go to the temple. Yeah. But the Jesus to -do list dined temples. with the sinners. He dined with the dirty people on the streets, the people that were considered not good to be around by society. Yeah. And if Jesus did that, then why aren't we? And, and, and I, am, I am a sinner, and I am not worthy. I'll never be worthy, but Jesus died for me and paid for that and lives in me. And so his righteousness becomes my own. And that is something that was never taught about in the Mormon church. It was all about my righteousness. And guess what? That's never going to be sufficient, ever. No. And so that's why you always kind of feel depressed in the Mormon church. Like, I keep trying and nothing's happening, so what the heck? Yeah, and yeah, and they just don't, they don't understand that. Mm -mm. Uh, thinking that they're doing, their, that they're being good people by doing their works. And, mm -hmm. yeah. and they are really good people. Like, yeah. they're really 
they have the right idea in a sense, but they don't. They're missing Jesus. <laughs> Yeah, you know they're missing the big picture. <laughs> like, yeah, like your your mom said that they, uh, Jesus is. Uh, that's, all, that's all we have to talk about is Jesus. But why mm. would we want to talk about anything exactly. else? Yeah, it's it's a story. I've, I um, the story of the, of Jesus, is a story that's told, millions and millions of times. But it's new every time you hear it. Yeah, and it's just refreshing yeah, and it's really freeing. Been. It's really been good news for me. And, mm -hmm. um, you uh, saw, I guess, these changes in your dad, mm -hmm. and uh, that must have had influence on the rest of the family. Did you feel the, the, some of the challenges that your mom was feeling? Yeah. Because you would have felt bad and probably judging him too, right? I was... I remember my neighbor saying... Hey, you know, we miss your dad. Is your dad okay? And I was still very Mormon. He's sure. Like, yeah. And I and I said, you know what? My dad's actually better than ever, and he's happy, and he loves the Lord just as much as was you do. Was he reading the Bible then? And yeah. Yeah. And I was saying, I'm good with where my dad's at. I don't. I'm not worried about his salvation. I know he's good with God. And in fact, sometimes I feel like he knows more than. That. Any of us do. He's just so in tune with the spirit, and I just, you don't need to worry about my dad, because I'm not. He's yeah, super happy. It, would they have judged you for that? I'm comment? sure they thought, yeah. I mean, he didn't say anything, yeah. but I'm sure they were thinking, well, no, Eli, because he's not Mormon anymore, so how is that? Yeah, that doesn't compute, huh? And that same person once told me, Eli, I feel like I can't have any discussion with you, any real talk, because you don't have the same beliefs as me. And that broke my heart, because we can still, like, I, I, I had some damaged relationships when I left yeah. because suddenly I'm a completely different person. But Your I'm a different person as in I'm a new creation. Yeah. I'm still Eli. Yeah. And I, um, I had a hard time at first not pushing it on other people. I had a friend one time struggling um, and I told him, you know, my prayer is that you can start coming to Christian church. And that was me talking. That was not what I thought God, I thought God wanted me to tell him that. Yeah. And that was, that's a discussion that we never talked about anymore. That was a hard day, and he just shut down. Uh -oh. um, and so what I have been working on and I hope, hopefully gotten better at is just the thing to do with people that don't believe Christianity like we do is just to be an example and just to love them, and then God will do the rest. Because God, God did the rest with me. I yeah. didn't ever know. No. People were praying the heck out of me, <laughs> and I didn't even know it. And to, so, to come back to Mormonism to or to be Christian? To both sides. Yeah, probably But I both. guess the Christian had a bigger army. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just astounded and grateful, and I just want my prayers for them to be able to have that too. So, so now you play piano. Yes, I do. And have you played that ever since you were young? Or? I played that since I was about eight. Yeah? Yeah. And so you play on a worship team. Mm -hmm. Isn't it interesting how that music is so different? Uh, that was the one thing that yeah. we noticed first and then usually the words are up on the up on on the so you can read mm -hmm. them too but it's all about Jesus all the words are yeah. all about like it's kind of funny all the christian songs kind of sound the same but that's okay it's all like i surrender <laughs> your glory your name is the great like all that stuff but it's all true it's all about jesus and mm -hmm. yeah it's do you write about. do you write any of your own music i write my own music that's instrumental yeah um uh, i've tried I mean, writing I, lyrics I but i'm not good at lyrics written, oh. My dad is Does like he that. do lyrics? Mm -hmm. Well, you write the music and he can you know, provide <laughs> yeah, sure, the lyrics. Yeah. We have a little band. Yeah. And your mom's musical. Your mm -hmm. other brothers and sisters, were they? Yeah, my little sister all? sings. My little brother plays the piano. And he actually has three worship songs that he's written himself. Oh. So. Oh, that's neat. Yeah. Well, can you even imagine, again, I'm trying to put this in perspective of a 19, 20-year-old young man, but could you even have imagined that that your life would have changed so drastically in the last few years? No. <laughs> I mean, you just... But I'm glad it did. Yeah. Did you ever do baptisms for the dead? Oh, yeah. Yeah? And I'll tell you, when I was doing that, I was like, this is boring. Boring? Like, this is boring. You didn't have a sense that you were doing God's work? No, or... I was... I, I, it was more like an event, and it, I was looking forward to the pizza afterwards, really. Yeah. Knowing it you were just... headed to the to the pizza place yeah. after. It just didn't, it felt like a get together thing more than like, wow, this is amazing. This is God's work. Like, I just love getting dunked underwater for all these names. It's amazing. But it wasn't like that for me. It was kind of like, okay, this is cool and all. I'm with my friends. We got to be quiet and reverent. Yeah. But it never felt 
powerful to me. What felt powerful to me was Jesus. Yeah, and I assume the Bible's taken on a different pers uh, yes. interest for you as yes. well. Did you ever take Bi uh, New Testament or Old Testament yeah, we in did. seminary? But they never talked about Galatians. Oh works, no, works no, no. and grace. They never talked about that. They talked about all the cool stories in the Old Testament yeah. and you know the story of Jesus, of course. But yeah. we never really talked about any other stuff. And any th and any problems that were there it was always well. The, you can't trust the Bible yeah. anyway. So. And what I didn't like was when we when we talked about like sin and stuff was that they rated sin, like devastating sin to like it's okay, like kind of okay sin. Yeah, isn't that interesting? It makes you feel like a horrible <laughs> person when you've done one of the top list ones. Yeah. And the thing is that um, it's all the same in God's eyes. And house. now we know that sin is sin. <laughs> sin is sin. And we have a new perspective and a new birth that makes us say, I don't want to do that anymore. Yeah. You know? And, and, then, the, and then again, like we've said, the trust that we have that Jesus has paid for our sins on the cross mm. and that he's taking care of it for us. Freedom. Yeah. It's freedom. It, and it, it is finished. Huh? It is finished. Yeah. yeah. That's, yeah. I remember my dad saying, um, you know, it, it is finished. Like the thing about the Mormon Church is, this was after I had already left. The thing that they don't understand is that he said those words. It is finished. And when we add anything to that, it's insulting to what he did for us on the cross. It says that's not enough. Jesus, thanks for dying for me and taking yeah. all the sins of the world, past, future, and present. But that's not enough for me. I'll, I'll finish the work, yeah. Jesus. Yeah, no. That's that's terrible. And then to have the veil of the temple rent, mm -hmm. and then Joseph Smith puts it back up yeah. in our temples. It, it's just amazing. Mm -hmm. Well, you've got a minute or so. You've got family and friends, maybe, that you'd like to say something to, would you? Um, <laughs> I love them. <laughs> like, I don't really know. Like, Mormons will always try to preach. They, they can be preachy. Like I told you about my friend at that lunch hour one time. Yeah. Um, I don't think I want to do that to them. I think all I can you do just show them is just love show them and, love. That's yeah. what Jesus did. That's how Jesus got his believers. He loved people, really truly loved them. And if people can see that love, not my love, but God's love through me somehow, I think they'll have a change of heart. Because that's what happened with me. I had a friend who's a Christian who loved me and invited me to church with her. And then I started going more and more. And then I went to my dad's church because yeah. she chose to love me. And isn't it so much richer and fuller and and more more beautiful than we could have ever imagined before. Amen. Eli, thank you so much for coming and sharing. Thank you and, for having uh, me. It's, uh, I can tell your enthusiasm and uh, I don't know what it would have been like for me to be 19 and to have this witness of Jesus because it <laughs> took me 65 years. But, oh, man. but I'm thrilled that I'm where I'm at and I'm so, you're going to touch so many lives in the rest <laughs> of your life and praise God. Praise God. See you next time. Yeah, I am good.